sheep. What does sheep have to do with abundance? And who starts a presentation with sheep? <laughs> sheep are actually terrific contributors to us, if you think about it. We have carpets, upholstery, clothing, suits that all come from sheep. We shear off their wool and it just keeps growing back. They're also the main character in an economic theory called the tragedy of the commons. And in the tragedy of the commons, I have 10 sheep, you have 10 sheep, you have 10 sheep, you have 10 sheep, you have 10 sheep. And we decide that we're going to share a common pasture. And that those sheep can graze forever in that pasture. There's enough for all of us. But say I decide that I actually produce the best sheep. So it would be okay if I graze one more sheep in the pasture. No one will know. Everybody likes me. And so it'll be totally fine. Nobody will really notice. And my neighbor decides to do the same. And then he decides and she decides. They're just going to graze one more sheep in the pasture. Over time, the pasture becomes overgrazed. And there's not enough pasture for anyone. So while we all believed that we were benefiting, we actually all lost. And that is scarcity. Scarcity means that there's just not enough. And so I better take mine now because I do deserve this. People who are focused on scarcity are constantly unhappy. They're focused on short-term decisions and they don't care about the greater good. And if you think you don't do this, three words, overhead bin space. <laughs> are you that guy that hurries to get on the plane because you know there's not gonna be enough overhead bin space? and you put your one bag up there because you know you gotta be first. Put your one bag up there and then you're like, well, I might put my second bag because I travel more than everybody else. I need the leg room and I'm this tall. Nobody really knows and nobody ever says take that second bag out. That's what happens with scarcity. There's not enough. And we do this. We do this all the time. But imagine a world where we operate, all of us, with abundance. Imagine a world where we are completely aware of our impact on others. That we don't live with scarcity. That we're willing to lose to win. How great would that be if we all decided that we all can win? That we all decided in our communities, in our schools, in our neighborhoods, we all can win. That is an abundance mindset, where we believe that we all can win. We're genuinely happy. And we don't feel like we have to take before everybody else takes. We're focused on long-term decisions, and we're very aware about our impact on each other. And that we believe that we all have a generous and abundant spirit. Now, I believe this begins with gratitude. That if you have an attitude of gratitude, your lens is different. Did you know that it is impossible, impossible to be stressed out while you're giving thanks? Think about it. It's impossible to be stressed out while you're giving thanks. And people that are happy and fulfilled look at things differently. They focus on the positive. They're not just, do I have a glass half empty, half full? They're happy to have a glass. And they know how to fill that glass when they need to fill that glass. They celebrate the achievements of others. So your gain does not create a loss for me. Now let me tell you about when I learned this most profoundly. On January 20th of 2012, I was diagnosed with an awful cancer, with a very grim survival rate. I was the least likely person to get cancer. I had a healthy lifestyle, I exercised nearly every day. The strongest drug I had ever taken in my life was a Motrin, and I had delivered two children on this planet. 
how did I have cancer? I was at the top of my career, the top of my personal life. I had everything to lose. And yet I had this awful, terrible disease. And they said, we don't get many survivors for ovarian cancer. I was bugged and I thrashed around and I couldn't figure this out. I never said, why me? But I did say, why now? Two young sons, how was I going to leave my husband of nearly 30 years that I adored? How was he gonna be a widower? And oh my gosh, who was the crazy second wife who was gonna come in with her rotten <laughs> kids and be mean to my sons and spend all my money? How was I at this place? I figured it out. After thrashing around for seven days and up all night long trying to solve this problem, I figured it out. It hit me. At 5.17 a.m., seven days later, this is a photograph from my hospital bed that I took with my phone because I didn't want to forget the moment that I figured it out, that I was the most blessed human on the planet, that I had been married for nearly 30 years to my college sweetheart. I tell my kids I'm married to my boyfriend. <laughs> I had two beautiful, smart, capable, funny, well-mannered sons who were going to do great things on this planet. I had parents and in-laws who taught me what it meant to be a person of tremendous faith. I had a career where I was able to work with some of the most amazing people who helped me build really special things. And I was blessed. And at that moment, I realized over our front door, we have a sign that says, this family does hard things. And I was able to teach my sons what it meant to do something really hard, to face something really awful. Because every one of us will have something really hard and really awful in our life. My sons will have something really hard and really awful. And I will be able to show them what it means to stand up to this with guts and tenacity and to do something really amazing. And that's when I figured it out. Gandhi said, I cried because I had no shoes. And then I met a man who had no feet. The second thing that we can do to build abundance is to embrace kindness. Conscious acts of kindness every day. There are miracles in small things. We can share our talents, not just the talents you think about all the time, but listening and loving and caring and lifting. Those are unbelievable talents. And we can build and maintain meaningful relationships. When I was in chemotherapy, I play in a rock and roll band and my bandmates came to me and sang to me and they lifted me and those are important relationships to me. When I was in the hospital, I had a rough go at it. I had this extensive surgery, I hadn't eaten for a couple weeks, my veins were failing, I was dangerously low, I had dangerously low levels of potassium. And they said, Mrs. Clark, we really need to force potassium into your system so we're having a hard time finding your veins. This little woman came in and the, the team said, look, she's gonna help you. Her job was to find veins in infants and they said she's gonna be able to find your veins. And as she carefully and, and delicate, delicately administered to me, she warmed my veins, but she also warmed my heart. And I called her the vein whisperer. <laughs> and she lifted me, this little woman, and she never left until her job was done. She shared her talents with me and it wasn't until the very end, I found out that her husband of nearly 30 years had just died of throat cancer unexpectedly. And her act to me was a conscious act of, kind, act of kindness. And I never carried the weight for her, but she loved me and I will never forget it. The third thing that we can do is we can build win-win situations where we focus on the outcomes that we care about most and that we plan with a purpose. Because if you fail to plan, you actually plan to fail. Get up early, build time in your day to help other people, to selflessly give of your time and your talents, and to have realistic expectations about what you can achieve and what you're able to do. And to not be, if, never be afraid to lose to win. The founder of my company came to me three years ago and said, I'd like you to come and join me and I'll give you the president and the CEO title. 
And I was like, why would anybody do that? He'd built this company over 10 years. Why does he want to do this? And he said, because together, I believe, we can build something special. And I'm willing to take a smaller piece of a much bigger pie. He taught me what it meant to be a builder. There are two types of people. There are people that want a bigger piece of the pie, and there are people who want to build a bigger pie. Be a builder. Imagine what would happen if we became builders of people, of children, and of each other in our community. Abundance absolutely makes sense. Everything in your life will be better. Your personal relationships, your careers, the things that you care about, if you adopt a lens of abundance. I had cancer, and it was the greatest gift that I could ever imagine, and I would never trade it. Because I learned that people are good, that people are kind. I learned that we can lift each other even when we are at the lowest part of our lives. I learned that there's things that every one of us can do every single day. Make happiness a choice. It is a lens for which you will look through a much better life on this beautiful planet. So I ask you to remember to be grateful to look for opportunities to show kindness, to create conscious acts of kindness, and to build win-win situations. And as for me, I choose abundance. Thank you.